Welcome to the Blender Dungeon. We're going to go ahead and create this scene, or something pretty close to it, here in Blender. This is, this is something for beginners, and this entire project is designed to show you a lot of the functionality of Blender. So this is in Photoshop here, where I've done a few things. I've added in the character in here, put in a few chains in the foreground. I think it messed a little bit with the, the mist here and there, but not too much. Here's another one that's almost exactly what comes out of Blender. It's different lighting conditions. This is a, a second time going through with the build on it to practice that. So you can see there's things that are a little different, but pretty much the only Photoshop thing is I think I might have touched up a few little things here and there and then added the Explorer guy here, but that's about it. Otherwise, what you've seen here, this is not hours of work in Photoshop. This is basically what you can get at the end of the process when you hit render. So go ahead and start a new file in Blender. And I really want you to take a minute and follow along with these first steps here, uh, setting up your document to be the same as mine or your copy of, of Blender. Once you know what you're doing, you can set it up and customize it however you want. You can change keyboard shortcuts, you can change themes, all kinds of stuff, make it look and behave exactly how you want. But while you're new, it's going to make a lot of sense if you make, make yours match mine a bit. So one of the first things we're going to do is go over here to preferences, and I just want you to add uh, add-ons. There's three that I want you to turn on, two now and one you can do a little bit later. So just if it's over here at interface when you first open it up, click on add-ons right there. This is the one I want you to do a little bit later. This is the blender kit right here up at the top. That's going to bring in some materials. That's what this is over here. That's going to bring in some materials that we can apply, but we're a ways away from that. So it also takes a little bit of time to download this. The other ones turn on instantly. You just check the box and they're ready to go. You don't even need to restart. Um, the other two that I want you to add here are the node wrangler and we can type a, a node or NO even, and find the Node Wrangler. So just put a little checkbox right there next to Node Wrangler. And the other one is Import Export Images as Planes. So you can either scroll down through the list or just do what I do here. Start typing the word and it'll jump to it. These two, Import Export Images as Planes and the Node Wrangler, just turn those on and leave them on. There's no reason. They're so incredibly useful. I don't understand why they're not on by default. So turn on those two and eventually that Blender Kit, this, this online asset library. You can add that one later on. But once you have those two turned on, go ahead and close off the Blender preferences. And in order to make the workspace look like mine does here, I have a couple of little gizmos turned on. So when I select this little cube right here, you can see I get this little move gizmo. And that comes from this little area right over here, the little bow and arrow. When you click on that little down arrow there, you can see that object gizmos here, one of them is move, put a little checkbox right there, and that'll turn these little handles on. That way we can just grab the handles. We don't need to hit the G key and move things around. The nice thing about this is, is we can be in a perspective view and we know we're moving something exactly sideways or straight up and down or whatever. The other thing is to make it look the way that it does right now is we're going to want to find these little buttons over here. So we have wireframe to sort of see through everything. We have what we're in right now, which is the solid view, which has no materials and doesn't worry about lighting or anything. It's just showing the objects kind of like clay. It's kind of the workspace where we're going to be in for a while. The next one over is a material preview. That's really useful where it shows the materials that have been applied to objects. Obviously, we don't have any yet, um, but it doesn't worry about the lighting. It has kind of its own built-in lighting, so you don't have to worry about um, seeing the materials under the lighting that you have in your scene. And then the last one is turning everything on. It's turning on the lighting, any kind of special effects or whatever, that kind of stuff. That's the full rendered view. So we're going to be in uh, these views, jumping back and forth in them throughout the build. But we're going to spend the most, uh, most of our time at the beginning here in this uh, first view here, in this solid view. But in order to get it this have this sort of color and these sort of edges nice and clear here, we're going to find this little drop down arrow. Find that little drop down arrow. That's the little settings that you can have for each of those different ones for each of the different modes. Drop that little arrow down. And I have selected from this list random for color, which means every time I add an object, as we add new objects, they will be a random color. They're all kind of these pastel, they're sort of mauve and pale green. and But it's going to drop in a random color. And it's really useful for you to see, oh, the cube is separate from this other cube over here, or I accidentally added a cube to the same object in edit mode when I meant for them to be two different objects. That can be very useful, and it just makes it a little bit easier to see what's going on. The other thing that's happening down over here is that I've checked this little box right here that says cavity. And if you check that little box there, you get, see this is a, that sort of highlight on the edges. It gives this kind of fake bevel on the edges there, and that just makes it a little bit easier to see the object. So, you know, you can, you can imagine a bunch of objects kind of stacked on top of each other without that on. It makes it a little harder to see. Now, there's a lot of different things that you can do in here. You can play with these on your own time. And the last thing I'm going to want you to 
to do is to come up here to the snapping here. We're going to use this a lot. So this little oh snap magnet here. It looks like a horseshoe or a magnet. So it's a little magnet there. We're going to not turn that on. You can click on that and turn that on and have it on all the time. But I think you're probably going to be better off just remembering that holding down the control key when you are um, dragging something around or rotating it or whatever will temporarily turn on the snapping. And that's usually what you want rather than having it on all the time and things are being yanked around in a way you don't want. However, there is this, this little drop down over here, which is very useful. We're going to switch over here to vertex, which means it's going to snap to the corners of things. Oh, snap. But you can also do edges and faces and the middles of things and the middle of a line and all kinds of stuff. These are very useful. Other thing I want you to do is come down here and check on rotate and scale. So having all three of those on down at the bottom, move, rotate and scale. So we're going to do uh, a lot of snapping while scaling here in a bit. And it's not going to work if you don't remember to turn on this little scale button here. You're turning it on by clicking on it and making it turn blue. And that's pretty much all we need to do to start off with. So that's our settings. We've got our preferences and the, uh, the add-ons turned on. On. We'll use those in a little bit here. We've got the move gizmo turned on here. So we know when we selected something, we see that move gizmo show up, which makes it easy to move it. And also it helps us see what is selected. And lastly, we've gone into the, uh, the display mode here and made a few changes to the display. And that's going to make it a lot easier to see. Now, if you want to save this and any other changes that you might want to have here, you can go up here to file and come down to defaults and then save as a startup file, which is what I have done here. Uh, saving a startup file means the next time you you open up Blender, it will be all these same settings here and you won't have to go and do that over and over again. We're going to stop right there on this video here and then on the second video we're going to start modeling the column that takes up most of the space in our scene.